Well, Alistair, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing an examination for discovery, kind of a mock, we'll do a good and a bad one. Right. Uh, I will play the lawyer for the employer, and you will play, pay, play the employee. Uh, 20 years of service, uh, a gym, and you were a personal trainer. And I'm going to be argumentative in this one. In the first one, yes, you're going to be argumentative. Right. And um, let's kind of just move forward with that. So the first right. question I'm going to ask you, so um, generally, it, I guess just so people feel comfortable, the question, the first question is going to be, state your name, are you part of this lawsuit? And so you would say, yes, you are. Then we will go on to, you understand you're under oath and you promise to tell the truth. And again, you'd say, so these are just kind of standard things. Right. The idea is that you get that so that if I need to read this transcript into court, I can show, hey, you know, I explained to him what it was and he said he understood and agreed. There's a couple other questions. Then you do some background questions, just kind of generally, uh, what's your experience, what's your education, what's your uh, work experience, okay? So those are particularly in wrongful dismissal cases. And wrongful dismissal case, just so it's clear to everybody, that's where uh, the employee, which would be you playing you, alleges that they were improperly fired without severance or payment or with not enough severance. Those are very right. common things, okay? Um, so the, one of the biggest issues in those are the employment contract. And again, we're kind of not into it yet, but many corporations that hire people, um, they have uh, oral contracts, which just means you and I agree. Right. And uh, some of them have, and more and more nowadays, and in fact, all of them should have written contracts, okay? Right. So those are key, key documents. What's the agreement between the two parties? So um, the first question I'm gonna ask you, and this is kind of where you're doing the argumentative one. So if ours, you're sworn in, you've agreed. And so the first question I'm gonna say is, um, uh, so Alistair, with, uh, and the name of the company is Strength Gym, do you recall signing an employment contract? I can't remember right now. Do you have it with you? Well, it's your responsibility to, to have those type of documents, but um, yes, we do have it. But um, you have no recollection of signing? or, no, or do I don't you have, think so. You, you don't think so or you don't have a recollection? Both. It can't be both. It has to be one or the other. I just don't remember signing anything. Okay, so you don't remember. It's been so 20 years, so okay. it's been a long time All since right. anything. Do you have any recollection of the terms of those agreements? No, I don't. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, it turns out you did sign an employment contract, and so I'm just going to show you the, the agreement here. And do you um, recognize that document? No, not really. Okay, is that your signature at the bottom? It might be. I'm not sure. Okay, I've changed my signature over the years. Why did you change your signature over the years? Just for fun. It looks different, you know. Just spice things up in life. All right. So you have no idea whether this is your signature or not. No. Okay. Is there any reason to believe it's not your signature? Yeah, it might not be my signature. So what reason would you have to say that's not your signature? Well, it's not my signature right now, and again, it's been 20 years, so I have no idea. It might be fake. Okay, is there any reason to believe it's fake? Yeah, the company's pretty dishonest. You know, they fired me without any warning. They didn't pay me the money. Uh, they've done a lot of dishonest stuff, told lies in the past. So. Okay, do you have any evidence that that's not your signature? Uh... Yeah, I could probably send something that shows that it's not my signature right now. No, I don't no, know do you, what my you, signature was 20 years ago. Do you have any evidence that that's not your signature? I don't have it with me right now. Okay, so what evidence do you have that it's not your signature? I'd have to look and see if I have anything. I mean, it's been 20 years, so... So the answer is no, you don't have any evidence that that's not your signature? Not right now, but maybe there's something that exists. And where would you find that something? I'd have to look through some old, uh, you know folders or boxes in my basement. Okay, so the answer is you don't know if there's that's your signature. Right. Okay, the answer is you have no evidence that that's not your signature. Well, I might have evidence, but you, you know, just don't know where I it is. I didn't bring the, well, you know, I don't know right now. No. Okay, you understand you have an uh, obligation to disclose any relevant information? Right. Okay, so you haven't disclosed any evidence that this is not your signature. Right. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a, an email that you got with this uh, agreement. Um, do you recognize that document? It looks familiar, but it's, you know, it's again, it might be different. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, these are your documents. Do you recall seeing these documents at all? I, I've seen documents like this, but, okay. you know, I, I don't know. So the email address is alistair at gmail.com. Right. That's your email address? Right. Yeah, it's one of them. Okay. So you can see from this uh, employment contract that uh, 
you only get three weeks severance. You see that? I see that it says three weeks, but again, I don't know if this is the document I signed, so. Okay. Um, if this is the document you signed, then you would agree that you only get three, three weeks severance. Well, that's, that's what it says, but you know, okay. there's, there's been, we've redone the agreement verbally over the years as well. You know, we've changed things and you know, my pays changed, my hours have changed. Um, I seem to remember them telling me, you know, it was going to be 10 weeks. So I think. Who, who uh, told you that? Uh, Bob. <laughs> Who's Bob? See you. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right. And when did Bob tell you that? Um, I think he told me that probably two months before I got fired. Okay. And how did he tell you that? Where were you? Oh, we were just in the coffee room. Okay. Drinking a protein shake. And, uh, you know, he told me that we were changing it to, uh, to 10 weeks. Okay. And who was there? Anybody? Uh, no, there was no one else there. It was just us. Okay. And did he tell you why he was changing it? Uh, because I was doing such a great job um, in terms of the amount of clients I was servicing. Okay. Yeah, I've been with the company for 20 years and there were other things that he told me as well. Um, you know, he was going to increase my salary and, um, and that he was happy with my, my performance and service over two decades. Okay. And did he increase your salary? Uh, he told me he was going to, but this is one of the lies I talked about before where, you know, I kept following up with him saying, you know, when's when am I going to start getting the new pay? Um, and he kept just blaming the bookkeeper, saying it was a mistake, okay. um, and that he was going to speak to that and, person. And sorry, when did this meeting happen? I think it was uh, two months before I was fired. Okay, and it was in the, in the uh, staff lounge, you said? Right. Or, okay. And nobody else was there? Right. Okay. Uh, you were working at the time? Yeah. Okay, and Bob was working at the time? Right. Okay. Uh, do you remember what day of the week it was? or? Uh, I can't remember. Okay. Did you follow up by email at all? No, I only followed up verbally. You know, every time I saw Bob around the office, um, I would ask him when, um, when the pay was going to start increasing. Okay. And so at that point, he increased your severance from three to 10 weeks. That's right. Okay. And do you have any evidence of this conversation? Uh, well, no, again, um, I don't think he ever actually talked to the bookkeeper or actually did anything that he was that he said he would do. So um, it just just the verbal agreements, the only evidence. Okay. And do you have any evidence of this verbal agreement? Well, I, I don't know what kind of evidence there would be in a verbal agreement. Well, did you follow up by email and say, hey, Bob? No, I did not. Okay. Why didn't you? I thought Bob was an honest person and I like doing things face to face. I'm old school that way and I trusted Bob. So I didn't see the need to start thinking about legalese. I didn't think he would fire me after 20 years and I didn't think he would screw me over on my pay severance. So you know um, in the contract, the employment contract that uh, they could terminate you if you were late three times in a row, correct? Well, I see that's what it says on the paper, but again, I'm not sure that this is the agreement okay. I signed. And you were late three times in a row, right? Um, I'm not sure about that. No, I don't think so. Okay. And so when you were written up to, for being late three times uh, in a row, what, uh, what was your response? Well, each situation was different, but every time I wouldn't agree that I was late because I was doing something uh, that was for the benefit of the company. You know, part of my job is working social media or creating videos or responding to clients. I work from home sometimes. Um, sometimes I have to go and pick up supplies and supplements from stores. So no part of my job ever requires me to specifically be there at 8 a.m. every day. 